Excuse me. Morning again. We're fixing to get started with morning prayer, beginning in the Book of Common Prayer on page 78. And if you do not have a book copy, you may find the Book of Common Prayer at BCP, what is it, online.org, something like that, bcponline.org. Good morning, everyone. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Looking at page 79, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. <clears throat> we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let us say together now on page... 82, the Venite. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the corners, of the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Now turn to Psalm 78 on page 694, Psalm 78. Page 694, we're going to read responsively by whole verse. But if you want to read all of it with me, I won't tell anybody. Psalm 78, verses 1 through 39, which is pretty much the whole thing. <laughs> Of part one. Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times. That which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us, we will not hide from their children. We will we recount to generations to come the praiseworthy deeds and the power of the Lord, and the wonderful works he has done. He gave, his, he gave his decrees to Jacob and established a law for Israel. 
which he commanded them to teach their children, that the generations to come might know and the children yet unborn, that they in their turn might tell it to their children, so that they might put their trust in God and not forget the deeds of God, but keep his commandments, and not be like their forefathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation whose heart was not steadfast and whose spirit was not faithful to God. The people of Ephraim, armed with a bow, turned back in the day of battle. They did not keep the covenant of God and refused to walk in his law. They forgot what he had done and the wonders he had shown them. He worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He split open the sea and let them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through with a glow of fire. He split the hard rocks in the wilderness and gave them drink as from the great deep. He brought streams out of the cliff and the waters gushed out like rivers. But they went on sinning against him, rebelling in the desert against the Most High. They tested God in their hearts, demanding food for their craving. They railed against God and said, can God set a table in the wilderness? True, he struck the rock, the waters gushed out and the gullies overflowed. But is he able to give bread or to provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was full of wrath. A fire was kindled against Jacob and his anger mounted against Israel. For they had no faith in God, nor did they put their trust in his saving power. So he commanded the clouds above and opened the doors of heaven. He rained down manna upon them to eat and gave them grain from heaven. So mortals ate the bread of angels. He provided them for them food enough. He caused the east wind to blow in the heavens and let out the south wind by his might. He rained down flesh upon them like dust and winged birds like the sand of the sea. He let it fall in the midst of their camp and round about their dwellings. So they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. But they did not stop their craving, though the food was still in their mouths. So God's anger mounted against them. He slew their strongest men and laid low the youth of Israel. In spite of all this, they went on sinning and had no faith in his wonderful works. So he brought their days to an end like a breath, and their years in sudden terror. Whenever he slew them, they would seek him and repent and diligently search for God. They would remember that God was their rock and the most high God, their redeemer. But they flattered him with their mouths and lied to him with their tongues. Their heart was not steadfast toward him, and they were not faithful to his covenant. But he was so merciful that he forgave their sins and did not destroy them. Many times he held back his anger and did not permit his wrath to be roused. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a breath that goes forth and does not return. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first lesson today comes from the book of Esther, chapter 5, a reading from Esther. On the third day, Esther put on her royal robes and stood in the inner court of the king's palace, opposite the king's hall. The king was sitting on his royal throne inside the palace, opposite the entrance to the palace. As soon as the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, he won his favor and he held out to her the golden scepter that was in his hand. Then Esther approached and touched the top of the, of the scepter. The king said to her, what is it, Queen Esther? What is your request? It shall be given you, even to the half of my kingdom. 
Then Esther said, if it pleases the king, let the king and Haman come today to a banquet that I've prepared for the king. Then the king said, bring Haman quickly so that we may do as Esther desires. So the king and Haman came to the banquet that Esther had prepared. While they were drinking wine, the king said to Esther, what is your petition? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. Then Esther said, this is my petition and request. If I have won the king's favor, and if it pleases the king to grant my petition and fulfill my request, let the king and Haman come tomorrow to the banquet that I will prepare for them. And then I will do as the king has said. Haman went out that day happy and in good spirits. But when Haman saw Mordecai in the king's gate and observed that he neither rose nor trembled before him, he was infuriated with Mordecai. Nevertheless, Haman restrained himself and went home. Then he sent and called for his friends and his wife, Zeresh, and Haman recounted to them the splendor of his riches, the number of his sons, all the promotions with which the king had honored him, and how he had advanced him above the officials and the ministers of the king. Haman added, Even Queen Esther let no one but myself come with the king to the banquet that she prepared. Tomorrow also I am invited by her together with the king. Yet all this does me no good so long as I see the Jew Mordecai sitting at the king's gate. Then his wife Zeresh and all his friends said to him, Let a gallows fifty cubits high be made, and in the morning tell the king to have Mordecai hanged on it. Then go with the king to the banquet in good spirits. This advice pleased Haman, and he had the gallows made. The word of the Lord. Now let us say together uh, Canticle number 13 on page 90 of your Book of Morning Prayer. Book of Morning Prayer. Book of Common Prayer. Canticle 13. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple. On the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our second reading. The New Testament is from the book of Acts, chapter 18. A reading from Acts. But when Gallio was proconsul of Achaia, the Jews made a united attack on Paul and brought him before the tribunal. They said, "This man is persuading God to worship, persuading people to worship God, in ways that are contrary to the law." Just as Paul was about to speak, Gallio said to the Jews, "If it were a matter of crime or serious villainy, I would be justified in accepting the complaint of you Jews." But since it is a matter of questions about words and names in your own law, see to it yourselves. I do not wish to be a judge of these matters. And he dismissed them from the tribunal. Then all of them seized Sosthenes, the official of the synagogue, and beat him in front of the tribunal. But when Gallio paid no attention, but Gallio paid no attention to any of these things. After staying there for a considerable time, Paul said farewell to the believers and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. At Centri, uh, Centri, Centri, can't say anything this morning. At Centria, he had his hair cut, for he was under a vow. When they reached Ephesus, he left them there, but first he went 
himself went into the synagogue and had a discussion with the Jews. When they asked him to stay longer, he declined. But on taking leave of them, he said, I will return to you if God wills. Then he set sail from Ephesus. When he landed at Caesarea, he went up to Jerusalem and greeted the church and then went down to Antioch. After spending some time there, he departed and went from place to place through the region of Galatia and Phrygia, strengthening all the disciples. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well-versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way, the way of God more accurately. And when he wished to cross over to Achia, the believers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, he greatly helped those who through grace had become believers. For he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we will say together now, uh, Canticle number 18, Song to the Lamb, page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with you blood you have redeemed, for with, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor forever and forevermore. Our gospel reading comes from Luke this morning, chapter three. As the people were filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened and the Holy Spirit dis descended upon him in bo bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. The word of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Turning to page 96, let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, not, let not the needy O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Our colic for today. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passed away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Turning now to page 100. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now if you have any prayer requests, please add those to the comments. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, Lord, we do pray for healing for Chanthi uh, from a painful bladder infection. We pray for Dai for provision uh, for their lives and ministry in Cambodia. We also ask for blessings upon Lucy, Lucy, <laughs> Lucy Dean and restore her to good health. We also give you thanks, Lord, for our loving church family. It's meant so much to us um, to be in contact during these days of uh, being apart. No, it's meant a lot to my family here. And just to know that people are always praying, it's, uh, it's uh, very encouraging. Yes, we also uh, ask special prayers for Mother Betsy as she prepares our church for gathering together again. We pray for wisdom for her in all things related to this especially. And thank you everyone for adding in those prayer requests and thanksgivings and praise. And we offer all these things up in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, let us continue on page 101, General Thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, 
preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Turning the page. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining today and have a blessed day. Uh, join us here again on our Facebook page for Noonday Prayer. Uh, at starting at 1210 and also Compline tonight and I believe uh, in the morning morning prayer is going to be said at the church starting at 730 um, I forget exactly where outside weather permitting weather permitting uh, rain is supposed to decrease and so probably that won't be an issue but could be a few sprinkles and uh, could use some more rain too but you know that's you just got to take what you can get. So thank you very much for joining, and we'll see you soon.